Hi guys, my name is Jamil Ahmad and today we will discuss about the graded quantitative dose response curves that's about the full and partial agonist uh, curves, duality of partial agonist curves. As you know that we were discussing about the general principles of pharmacology, uh, second chapter that's about the um, pharmacodynamics and in the previous lecture we discussed about the graded quantitative dose response curves that was about the uh, parallel and non-parallel dose response curves and in this lecture we will discuss about the graded quantitative dose response curves that tells us information about the full and partial agonist and quality, uh, quality of the partial agonist so now let's let's give, give you some uh, uh, I, I, I would like to repeat the previous lecture in few words that is the greater quantitative dose response curves in, uh, gives us information about affinity potency and efficacy so what is the affinity what is the potency and what is the efficacy we have uh, a complete lecture on these topics um, uh, we have a complete lecture on these topics you can see that lecture as well a link i have given below this uh, uh, in the description of this video but here i would like to here also, uh, I, I would also like to explain something about affinity uh, potency and efficacy uh, in, a small, in a small word that what is the affinity affinity is the ability of a drug this is the ability of a drug to bind the receptors to bind the uh, receptors that is called the affinity I mean that what is the ability of a drug to bind the receptors if a drug binds to the receptors very well it means that it has a greater affinity if a drug binds to the receptors in a poor way it means that that drug has a lower affinity okay and next is the potency what is the potency potency is the concentration or measurement of the drug concentration of measurement of the drug that gives us our desired effect okay so what is potency potency is the concentration or measurement of the drug that gives us our desired uh, desired effect desired action the, uh, the action we want the, the, that action is given by how much amount of a drug that is called the potency of a drug let's suppose that there is a two drugs let's suppose that that's coming here let's suppose that there is a two drug drug one and drug two so and our desired and we check this our desired effect by 50 percent effect so the, let's suppose that it's a 50 percent response of a drug in our body so two drug if uh, this drug will go this drug is showing 50 percent response this drug is also showing 50 percent response but what we have to see we have to see the concentration what is our desired effect the desired effect is 50 percent effect okay now we have to check the concentration of drug so we have two drugs drug one and drug two if drug one has concentration low let's suppose that uh, its concentration is uh, uh, 50 microgram and this concentration is 100 microgram so 50 microgram drug one is giving 50 percent response and 100 microgram drug is also giving 50 percent response in a, a, in a, in a equal time then which drug has the greater potency which drug is has uh, which drug is more potent the drug one d1 is more potent because it has less concentration and giving our desired effect desired action it means that d1 is greater potent it is little bit about that so what is the potency potency is the concentration of desired effect and if we compare two drugs the drug which has less concentration and we get the desired effects uh, in the same time but drug two has greater greater concentration the drug which has less concentration that has the greater potency so now we will move towards the efficacy what is the efficacy efficacy is so simple it tells us about the effectiveness efficacy tells us about the effectiveness simply that how much the drug is effective on a body how much drug is effective on a body that is called the efficacy so i think now you are able to understand this concept so now we will move towards our main topic that is about the full and partial agonist and duality of partial agonist so please come on full and partial agonist so full and partial agonist we have also explained full and partial agonist in our previous lectures as well but here i would like to repeat it once again that what is the full agonist full agonist basically is a drug uh, uh, this is a drug full agonist is a drug that gives a maximum response or a maximum efficacy drug that has a maximum efficacy and maximum response that is called the full agonist drug 
Okay, first you must know that what is the agonist. Okay, you must know that what is the agonist. Agonist basically is a drug, is a drug that goes and binds on the receptors, binds on the receptors of the cells, on the target cells, and shows its response. That drug is called the agonist drug. Okay, so what is the agonist drug? Agonist drug is a drug that binds to the receptors of the target cells and shows its response. That drug is called the agonist drug. But what is the full agonist? Full agonist is that is that drug that goes and binds to the receptors and gives its hundred percent response, maximum response, maximum efficiency, maximum effectiveness. The drug is maximum effective, and that drug is called the full agonist drug. The second concept is about partial agonist. So what is the partial agonist? Partial agonist. This drug is giving hundred percent response, but partial agonist. Will not give hundred percent response as the name indicate partial. So it will not give the hundred percent response. The drug that is less effective than the full agonist means that it will give the response less than full agonist and it is less effective than the full agonist. Okay, so it will. It, this is a drug. It will go. Will it will go and will bind with the receptors and will not show its hundred percent result. It will show. Less than hundred percent result, and then uh, less than hundred percent action. Then we will call this drug is the partial agonist drug. Okay. Now I think this is understandable for you. So please move on our main topic that is about the full and partial agonist curves. So please come here. So we will take the uh, uh, we will take on x axis log dose of our drug. We will take the dose of our drug, and on y axis we will take the response of that drug on our path. So now you can see there that there are the three curves A, B, and C. So please tell that these are the agonistic drugs or antagonistic drugs. Agonistic drug that goes binds the receptors and shows its response. And what is the antagonistic drug? Uh, the term I am using the antagonistic drug. What is the antagonistic? We will write something like there antagonistic drug. Drug. What is the antagonistic drug? it is opposite to agonistic so this is a drug this is a drug it will go it will bind with the receptors and after binding receptor it will not show the response mean that it will go and it will block the receptors and it will not allow the agonist to show the response that is called the antagonist okay so it will not show the response so please come here so please tell me that either these curves are agonistic or antagonistic you can see that one two three curves You can see that all three curves are showing response. You can see that some are showing fifty percent response, some are showing hundred percent response. So mean that these drugs are showing some response. Therefore, these three curves, all three curves, are known as the antagonist. A, a, sorry, agonist drugs because they are showing the response, and agonist will show the response, and antagonist will not show the response. So these all three curves, all three drugs are the agonist drugs. But the question is this that. Which drug is full agonist and which drug is partial agonist? As the definition indicated, that the drug which has the maximum efficacy that has the, the full agonist and which has the less efficacy that is the partial agonist. As you can see there, as you can see here, that this one is showing, I think, a ninety percent response, ninety percent response, and this one is showing fifty percent response. This is also showing fifty percent response. So drug B has maximum response. If the drug B has maximum response, therefore drug B is known as the full agonistic, and other two A and C has minimum response. Response or uh, action less than B, less than full agonist. Then therefore these two are called the partial agonist. So it was little bit about that. But as the graded index tells us information about the parity, potency, and efficacy. So here we will also see the these three terms. First, please look at the efficacy. So, what is the efficacy? Is the effectiveness of a drug that is the most important in the clinic area. Okay, in the practice uh, on a patient, that's very important for the uh, effectiveness or efficacy is very important. So, what is the efficacy? You know that this is about the effectiveness and how we check the effectiveness of two drugs. It's about effectiveness. Greater the response, greater will be the effectiveness. Greater the response, greater will be the effectiveness. And the second way we check the efficacy in the previous lecture I have explained. Remember that that is about that greater height, greater height, then greater will be the efficacy. Okay. Greater height of the curve, then greater will be the efficacy. Please check here. 
that which curve has the greater height? The B curve has the greater height. So B curve has greater efficacy as compared to A and C. Because as you can see there, what is the response? 90% response means that 90% effective. So the drug which is more response that is more effective, the drug which is more, more effective that has more efficacy. So a, a, a B drug has a greater height. So B drug has uh, B drug is more efficient, it has more efficacy, and A and C has less response, or you can say the less height, and these have the less efficacy. So these are the these have the less efficacy, less efficient drugs. So now we will compare the A and C. As you can see there, A and C are equal in height and equal in response. So equal response, equal effective. Equal effectiveness, both drugs are equal, in effect, uh, equal effective and therefore they have the equal efficacy. So what is A and C has equal height, okay, equal response, okay, when equal response then equal effectiveness, they are both are equally effective, then they both have the equal efficacy, okay. Now we have checked the efficacy here as well. Now we will check about the potency that's important in this graph. That's important, our main topic, our main consultation, our main uh, uh, topic is about um, potency. As you know that we have explained potency as well in the previous in the previous lectures that uh, potency has one limitation. Remember that. What is that limitation? If we want to compare the potency of two or three drugs, then there is a limitation as well that curves should not cross each other. If curves are crossing to each other, then we are not able to compare these curves. If these curves are not crossing to each other, then we are able to compare these ones. So we will first see the limitation and after that we will compare. And you know, and, uh, and the second part, you know that what is the potency? Potency is the concentration of our drug that gives us our desired effect. And if less amount and same response, uh, 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 again, I would like to repeat that D1 and D2 both have the same response, response is same and which has less concentration which has less concentration that has the greater potency okay and which has the greater concentration that has the sorry which has the greater concentration greater concentration that has the less potency remember this point one this point and second point we can check uh, in, a, in a quick manner that the curve closer to the y-axis the curve closer to the y-axis that has the greater potency okay number uh, two points at uh, two points the, if the response is same, if the response is same, number one thing, uh, response is same, then which drug has less concentration that has the greater potency. This is the number one conceptual conceptual point. And second point, we can check in the quick manner that the curve which is closer to the y-axis that has the greater potency. Two points. Okay. So now, what is the limitation? Limitation is that curve should not cross each other. So let's come here to compare. First, we want to compare A and C. Okay. First, we are going to compare A and C. So you can see that A and C, if I am going to move this one A in this way and C in this way, either these curves are crossing to each other, no, these curves are not crossing to each other. It means that we are able to compare to, the, uh, to both of these. So please apply the first one. And the response is same. Yes, response is same. 50% response. And which one is more potent? That has the less concentration. Both has the... Yeah, this one has the concentration, not those. This one has the more concentration and this one has the less concentration. So this one has the less concentration, so A has the greater potency. And a second quick manner and very easy manner, what is that? Closer to the y-axis uh, and greater has the potency. As you can see that A is closer to the y-axis as compared to C. So A has the greater potency than C. Okay. The second, now we will discuss here, now we will compare the B and C. That what is the comparison of potency between B and C. And first check the limitation that curves should not cross. As you can see that curves are crossing, no, it is moving here, it is moving here. So curves are not crossing. So we are able to check. And check in a quick manner that which one is closer to the y-axis? B is closer to the y-axis as compared to C. So B has the greater potency because it is greater, it is closer to the y-axis and second point response must be the same but you check here that which one is the greater response b has a greater response and also has the less concentration it's a double point 
the first exercise less concentration as compared to this one it means that b must have the greater potency and when we check the response then b has a less concentration as well as more response it means that b has the greater potency as compared to c so it was compared about b and c but in quick manner you can check that which one is closer to the y axis that has the greater potency but keep in mind the limitation that if curves should not cross each other if curves are crossing to each other we will not able to compare this graph and why i'm going to explain this question that if curves are crossing to each other why we are not able to why we are not able to compare these curves okay so now please come and compare a and b check a and b as you can see that if we are not going to see the limitation then you can say that a is closer to the y axis therefore a must have the greater potency that's simple so easy but we have to see the limitation that curves should not cross but as you can see here that curves are crossing as you can see there curves are crossing at this point so curves are crossing so we are not able to compare this this graph but why so i am going to solve this question so let's let's see the that at this point Mm, uh, okay okay continue at this point okay continue at this point and let's suppose that this is the drug concentration 5 10 15 20 25 and 30 okay so this is the uh, drug, uh, drug concentration so okay so we have two drugs a and b two drugs so we take the concentration 10 for both drugs for a drug and b drug we take the concentration 10 and we see that when we give the concentration 10 then what is the response of a drug that is i think about 30 percent okay that is about 30 percent and what is the response of b drug at 10 that's zero that's zero because it's starting at 15 it will start its action on 15 it will it will start to give its response at 15 but at 10 its response is zero so which drug has the more uh, more potency a drug okay uh, which drug has the maximum response a drug 30 percent and here concentration is same in this concept we were keeping changing the concentration and response was same but now in this concept please uh, please be careful and in this concept we have keep the concentration for d1 and d2 concentration same okay and now we will check the response concentration same if maximum response then it's mean that that drug has the maximum that drug has the maximum potency okay you know concentration is the same we know we will check the response if greater response then greater potency less response less potency as you can see there at the time of 10 10 we take the 10 uh, concentration of both drugs a and b and at 10 what is the response of a 30 percent and what is the response of b 10 percent so b has less response therefore b has less potential and this is this is so simple as the rule says that which one is closer to the y axis that has the greater potency so a is closer to the y axis so it has the greater potency so rule is you know, working here but as you move here as you move here no curves has crossed to each other no curves have crossed to each other this curve is here and this curve one is here okay so now we will compare at point 30 so please come here at point 30 okay so now please come at point 30 and check when the concentration is 30 of both drugs that is the same concentration then what is the response of drug 1 or drug a what is the response that is about 60 percent that is about the 60 percent and what is the response of drug b that is about 90 percent so concentration is the same and now we'll check the response drug b has greater response so drug b have must have greater potency and drug A must have less potency so it's mean that A is closer to the y axis but it is not showing the maximum response it is showing the less response so here the rule is violating therefore we says that when curves are crossing to each other then we will not able to compare these two curves because it will violate the rule okay so this was about that I think now it is understandable for you that simply I, I would like to simply repeat this one that when we check the efficacy then we will check greater the height greater the efficacy B has greater height as compared to these both so B has greater efficacy these both are equal to each other so these both have the equal efficacy to each other because they have both have the same height 
and we will check the potency. Potency says that the limitations curves should not cross to each other. When curves will not cross to each other, then we will be able to compare these two curves. Then we will uh, first we are going to compare A and C. As you can see that A and C are crossing to each other. No, they are not crossing to each other. So A is closer to the y-axis. So it has the greater potential. Now we will check the B and C. So B and C, first check the limitation. Either they are crossing to each other. No, they are not crossing to each other. So the curve B is closer to the y-axis. Therefore B has the greater potential. Now we, will, uh, now we will compare the A and B. This is A and B. As you can see that if we, if we increase the concentration of it, A and also B, then these both will cross to each other. So as they are crossing to each other, so now we are not able to compare these two drugs. So it was main concept about full and partial economics. I think now it is understandable for you. So now we will move on and we will check the duality of partial economics. So here we will see the duality of the partial economics. So now as particle economics, part, as partial, partial economics displaced economics and response it reduced uh, so, uh, this partial agonist acts as an antagonist. What this line says? This line says that what is the response of the full agonist? 100%. But what is the response of partial agonist? Less than 100%. Mean that response is reducing. And which thing reduces the response? That is called the antagonist. I have uh, gave you something about that. That uh, drug, antagonist drug will go and bind with the receptors and will block the receptors and it will not show the response. Mean that it will reduce the response. And the thing which reduces the response that acts as a antagonist. And here he is saying that partial agonist acts as something like agonist. Because agonist was giving the, this is the agonist, agonist was giving the 100% response, greater response. And when the partial agonist comes, then it reduces the response. So it reduces the response. And the thing which reduces the response that acts as the antagonist. So he is saying that partial agonist will act something like antagonists. Okay. So in next point, how these partial agonists and full agonists uh, uh, works together? Competition of full and partial agonists for binding. Binding to receptors. Binding to receptors. So mean that if we have two drugs, that uh, two drugs, one drug is full agonist and second is the partial agonist, so they have competition with each other. If full drug will bind with the receptor, then it will give the full response, maximum response. And if partial agonist wins and it binds with the receptors, then it has the less response. Okay, the concept says that full and partial agonists are in competition with each other for binding to receptors. If full agonist will bind, then it will give the full response. If partial agonist will bind, then it will give the less response. Okay? Because it is a partial agonist. It will not give the 100% response. So now I would like to give the examples here. The example of pendulol. The pendulol is a beta blocker drug. This is basically a beta blocker drug. This is not only a beta blocker drug, but also act as the partial agonist. So uh, pendulol, pendulol is a beta blocker drug. Means that it will go and it will block the beta receptors on the heart. So this is uh, this is about a herd that uh, what is the pendulol? <laughs> if we have a herd, and you know that uh, uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine and sympathetic system, uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, these both will go and act on the uh, herd uh, herd receptors and cause the stimulation of herd heart beating. It increase the heart beat, increase the blood pressure. So now. Pendulol is a beta blocker. It will go and it will block these receptors, and these uh, uh, these uh, epinephrine norepinephrine will not be able to act on the heart, and the heart will not pump. Okay, heart heart beat. Well, we can control the blood pressure. Okay, we can control the blood pressure. This is about the pendulol. But uh, the concept uh, be, uh, be, uh, the concept for the pendulol that pendulol is a beta blocker. Drug. It blocks the uh, it blocks the beta receptors, but as well as it is a beta blocker drug, it is also a Partial agonist mean that it will not block the beta receptors 100%. It will block the beta receptors, but for some instant and for some extent, and it can, it will also, it will also act as a partial agonist. Mean that it will also stimulate, it will also stimulate the heart to pump. Uh, it will also stimulate heart to beat, but to minimum level. If if, if there is a full agonist, then it will give the full response. Heart will beat and a full response but uh, this is the partial agonist pendulol is a partial agonist so heart will pump 
in a slow manner. Why? Because it also acts as the beta receptor, beta blocker. So it will also block the beta receptor and it also will give the small stimulation. So not full stimulation, small stimulation will also blocking the beta uh, blockers, uh, beta receptors. So it will also block the beta receptors. And second thing, it will also stimulate the heart, but in a slowly manner. Okay. So now I would like to give the example of brain wave. Let's suppose that you have take a test tube. Okay. In that test tube, you put the heart, you put the heart and you inject the full, full agonist and you inject the full agonist such as uh, epinephrine, not epinephrine, then the heart will pump, heart will beat in a, in a fast manner, uh, uh, very fastly, heart will beat very fastly because epinephrine, not epinephrine is full agonist and when full agonist will go, it will go the full response and heart will beat very, very fastly. Now, uh, take the second test tube and put the heart in them and then inject the partial agonist that is the pendulum. Okay, that is the pendulum. Now you check the heartbeat. Now the ha ha heart will beat in a slowly manner, not a fast manner. Why? Because pendulum is a partial agonist. It will not give the 100% response. Now, take the third one test tube and the third one test tube, put the another heart and inject the full agonist, that is the epinephrine and norepinephrine and also inject the pendulum. So now there is a mixture of pendulum, that is a partial agonist and also, uh, also the full agonist, that is the epinephrine and norepinephrine. So now, what will be the manner of beating of a heart? So now, heart will beat between the full and partial. That was about the full, when we get the full agonist, then heart will be beating fastly. And this is about the partial agonist, when heart will be beating slowly. So now this response, mixture, because now we have the mixture of both. Now heart will pump in, a, in, between, in between full and partial. So it will be between full and partial. Okay, so uh, mean that uh, when full will come, full will get full agonist will give its full response, and then we will add the partial agonist. And the partial agonist will go, then it will uh, reduce. It will not uh, finish that process because it is also a stimulator, a little bit stimulator. So it will also stimulate, but in a less stimulation. So it will decrease the heartbeat of a heart because this is a partial agonist. It will act as an antagonist, and it will decrease the heartbeat of a uh, uh, beating of a heart. So it was about the pendulum. So now we will apply this concept on this graph. Let's suppose that. Let's suppose that first uh, this is this is the body of our body. This is the body of a, this is a human body, and we are going to take the partial agonist in an isolated system. We don't have a full agonist. That is impossible in a practically in ID because we have epinephrine and our epinephrine in our body that acts as a full agonist. But let's suppose that. Let's suppose that. We are taking partial agonist and there is a no full agonist in our body and what is the partial agonist? That is the pendulum. So let's suppose that we are taking pendulum in our body in an isolated system. When we take the pendulum, pendulum is a agonist, is a partial agonist, it will go and first it will not give the response. It is a beta blocker. Okay, so it is a beta blocker. Uh, so it will not give the response. It will stop the heart slowly, slowly. But no, you know that pendulum is also a stimulator, but less stimulator. So it will also stimulate the drug because it is an agonist, partial agonist. It will give the response, but less response. So it will stimulate the heart. So it will stimulate the heart, and heart will start beating, but in a slowly manner. So in this way, heart will beat, but in a slowly manner. So it will increase, and heart will beat. So it is about the partial agonist. But no, this is the one case. And in the second case, let's suppose that we are no pendulum in our body. We have just epinephrine or non epinephrine, and sympathetic system is on. Sympathetic system is very active. When sympathetic system is active, then there is a more secretion of epinephrine and non epinephrine. Then they will go and they will give it the maximum response to the heart. Heart will beat in a maximum response. As you can see there, here we take the dose of full agnostic, that is the epinephrine and norepinephrine in our body in an isolated system and there is a no pendulum. We have not given the pendulum to a patient that we have just given the epinephrine and norepinephrine which is already present in our body. The sympathetic system is active and response will be 100% of the heart of the heart, heart beating. Heart will beat in a 100% response. So now, and in this way, now in the third point, remember the test tube, in third point, we put both things. The first, partial agonist, then full, uh, uh, full agonist, I mean the mixture of both. Now, we have heart in our body, and then we will, uh, we have the full agonist already in our body, that is epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now we will add the pendulum as well, but in this case, in this form, in the mixture form. Okay, so now we can see there that uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine first is active in our body, and our our blood pressure, our heartbeat is very high. Our heartbeat is very high and we want to 
load on our heartbeat at a normal level, then we'll get the pendulum and pendulum will act as a beta blocker as well at less amount, but it is also a stimulator. When it, it will, will give the partial agulas, then it will go and it will bind with the heart and it will act as the beta blocker. It will block the beta receptors and epinephrine or norepinephrine will not be able to act on the beta receptors. So heartbeat will slow down. Heartbeat will slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. So it must come here. It must come here because pendulol is a beta blocker. It will block the beta receptors completely and heart will, heartbeat will slow down, slow down and finish. Because it is a beta receptors, a beta blocker, it will go and block the beta receptors. And then the epinephrine or norepinephrine will not act on the beta receptors and heart will not pump. It must be so. But no, because no, because partial agonist is a beta blocker as well as partial agonist, meaning that it will stimulate the heart as well. So now first it is a beta blocker, it will decrease until here and then it is also a partial agonist. So it will give also its response. So we will get the uh, heartbeat in a normal way. In a normal way, first it was high. Then we will add the uh, uh, when when we gave this just partial aggressive, then it was very slow. Then we will add the full aggressive, it was very high. And we have a full aggressive, high blood pressure in our body. Then we add the pendulum. Then this response will come in between of high and low. So it will come in a normal way. So in this way, we will control the partial aggressive. Okay. So it was literally about the duality of the partial agonist. So now we will, uh, I would like to give the example of some important agonistic drugs which we used for uh, our blood, uh, for, for our heart, uh, for, for, for controlling our heartbeat. That is about the acetabutalol and second is the pendulol, uh, buspirone, um, aripiprazole and buprenorphine, that is the chromifen and tamoxifen and roxifen. These are some important partial uh, agonistic drugs important for the USMLE exam that you must know that these important agonist, partially agonistic drugs. There, there, there must be the, come the MCQs that uh, uh, there must be comes the MCQs that which drugs act as a partial agonist. So the, he will give the four names and you have to choose the one uh, one uh, uh, one answer. And you must remember these names. These names act as a partial agonist. Uh, and if uh, you remember these questions. And uh, you, you can see that, uh, uh, let's suppose that if there's a question that there is a four MCQs and he asks which one is the partial agonist. And you know that Pindilor is a partial agonist. Then other three will be the full agonist, obviously. So you must know that the partial agonist and you will, you will be able to solve the question. So it was about the quantitative, greater quantitative dose response curves, but about the partial, uh, full and partial agonist and duality of the partial agonist. In next lecture, we will discuss about the next curves. So thank you so much, guys.